In our last video, we introduced Nutanix Enterprise AI and walked through the interface, including deploying models from popular model repositories and creating endpoints to use those models. But what if you're in an air-gapped environment or want to test out a custom model? Hi, I'm Laura Giordana, Technical Marketing at Nutanix, and today I want to show you how you can use the Nutanix Enterprise AI to import a model manually. Let's take a look. To import a custom model, let's come over to Models and we'll click on Import Models as we did before. But instead of selecting Hugging Face or NVIDIA, we're going to click on Using Manual Import. So there's two options you can select from, pre-validated model or a custom model. The pre-validated models are all of the Hugging Face models that have been tested and validated to run on Nutanix Enterprise AI. And these are the same models that you can download directly from Hugging Face from this interface. But in this case, let's say that you don't have connectivity to Hugging Face from Nutanix Enterprise AI, and we need to download the models to a file share first. So that's what we're going to do here. Note that this could also be stored on an S3 compatible bucket, but in this case, we're going to use a file share. So we'll specify the model from the list and give it an instance name, and then we need to specify the file share information. So I've set up an NFS export at custom-models on my Nutanix files file server, and we also need to specify the directory path for the model. So let's go ahead and start by downloading the model files. So in my terminal here, I'm going to make sure that I have my, my mount point set up and I'm gonna create my mount point and mount my NFS export to this mount point. And then we can go ahead and navigate to the directory and create a directory for our models. Now there are a few different ways to download models from Hugging Face, but I'm going to be using the Hugging Face CLI command, which I think is one of the most simplest methods. And you can get more information on how to install and use it from the Hugging Face documentation. So the first thing you're going to wanna to do is make sure you're logged into the Hugging Face CLI. And this will take your Hugging Face token, which we discussed in the last video. So that same token that gives you access to models you're gonna use that as your token for logging in. And then once we're logged in, we can use the Hugging Face CLI download command. I'm gonna specify the local directory that I just created and specify the exact path to the repo, um, which is Gemma2 to, to BIT. And you wanna make sure, again, that you have access to the model. So remember to accept the EULA on the model page if it's a gated model and wait for access before you're able to download the models. Once the download is complete and is now on our file share, uh, we can see all the model files. Now we can come back into Nutanix Enterprise AI and specify that directory path that we created. So that Gemma directory path, which contains our model files and we'll click on upload. So it's gonna ask us to confirm that the model files are the same files that it expects. Um, so it should match what's on Hugging Face, which it is because we downloaded it from Hugging Face. So now it's gonna go ahead and create the PVC for our deployment to be able to access those model files. Once it's marked as active, we can now use this model in an endpoint. So coming over to the endpoints page, let's create a new endpoint. Um, we'll call it the Gemma EP. We'll select our model instance name that we just uploaded. Uh, we'll use GPUs, we'll create an API key, copy that out, and then go ahead and click create. And that's gonna go ahead like we saw in our previous video. Um, it's going to spin up an endpoint and connect to um, the PVC where our model files are stored. The only difference here is that instead of downloading them directly from the interface, we manually uploaded them via a file share. And once the endpoint is active and ready to go, we can of course test it out directly from the interface before handing it off, handing off the API key and the URL to a developer. In our next example, let's go ahead and import a custom model. So this is a model that has not been pre-validated. Um, so this could be a model from Hugging Face, but not from the list or from a different repo or your own custom model as well. So in this case, I have a model called Tiny Llama, which is a compact 1.1 billion parameter version of the Llama 2 model. And I've downloaded those files uh, to my file share here in the Tiny Llama directory. It's only two and a half gigabytes, so it's just good for testing out our custom model. So we'll go through the manual upload process again, this time selecting the custom model radio button. 
So instead of choosing the model from a drop-down list, uh, we're going to go ahead and give the model instance uh, name. And then we need to specify the size of the model so that the system knows how big to make the PVC. Um, it's a two and a half gig model, but I'm just gonna give it five gigs for some breathing room to include the tokenizer files and uh, the rest of the supporting files. Um, and I'll just give it the name of the developer and then everything else is the same as we saw before. So we'll specify the storage location, which is our Nutanix file server, the export path. And now of course we're pointing to our new directory where those tiny llama model files are stored. Once we click upload, we're gonna have to confirm that again, these are not validated to run on the platform uh, and may not offer the best experience. And then once we kick it off, it's gonna go ahead and create the PVC to read the files uh, from the mount path and attach the volume. Once the model is marked as active, we can create an endpoint in the same way that we did before. So filling out the details in terms of the endpoint name, the model instance we wanna use. And since this is a custom model, we'll have to provide the configuration details. So the vCPU and memory uh, per instance. So we'll do that here, then we'll create the endpoint. And once the endpoint is ready to be used, we can go ahead and test it in the same way as we did before directly from the interface, or we could have created an API key to test this externally. Um, but so we can see here that our endpoint is fully functional using our custom model files. So hopefully that helps get you started with manually importing models into Nutanix Enterprise AI. Stay tuned for future videos where we'll leverage Nutanix Enterprise AI for more real world use cases. And be sure to take a test drive at Nutanix.com slash test drive and look for the AI module. See you in the next video.